This is Coons Ford Turf Talk with Bruce Posner. 60 minutes of Maryland athletics and your phone calls at 410-481-1300. Now, here's Bruce yeah, Posner and you Turf Talk. To really talk, really talk about the Final Four, the Sweet 16, and the tournament Monday. It's not too late. Sportsboosters.com Monday at Cunningham's. Wayne, you there? Wayne? Bruce. Yes, finally we get you. Sorry, buddy. Monday at uh, at uh, Cunningham's at 6 o'clock, we're going to be doing an extensive look at the, uh, at the tournament. My early bird Final Four, Wayne, according to Lenardi, and he's usually pretty good, Auburn, Carolina, Xavier, and Michigan. Uh, All right, they got two of our picks in there. I had Xavier earlier today. You had Michigan. So we must know. We must know something. Well, it's just how we feel. But this, I, you know what? This could be the first time that you don't have a number one seed make the Final Four. Now, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I think Villanova is very skeptical without Phil Booth. I think they're very shaky. I don't think okay. they're that great. I would say that Virginia, you know, they play great defense, doesn't really have a go-to scorer, and that makes them vulnerable. Who else do you have as a number Kansas, one? Kansas. Kansas is number one. And, uh, wow, I mean, they've come on lately, but they've lost, you know, they've lost several games, and they've been taken to the wire many times. What the heck? Nebraska had them on the ropes. All right? Took a, a big uh, shot at the buzzer. To win. All right, that's another subject, Wayne, while we're talking about it. What does it say about the non-respect for the Big Ten that Nebraska goes 13-5 and five and does it and is not going to get a bid? How do you feel about well, that? I got to see them in person in New York, and I felt like they were playing for the tournament. Big Ten just doesn't have the cachet that they've had before. Uh, even though Tim Miles brought up Maryland as a case of teams that they beat, that Nebraska beat, that they had no control over the injuries or where they were. They had to play the schedule that was dealt. And they won 13 of those games, and he doesn't make the schedule. But when they get a chance to play up, they haven't done so well. Well, they only had, listen, they played Purdue, Ohio State, and Michigan State on the road, right? And they lost all three. And that's the basis of it, of why they're not getting selected. And they lost the game to Kansas, though they had them on the ropes. But if their big win was Maryland, you know, this year, I'm not sure how big that was, Wayne. They just don't have the top 50 resume. They did not schedule their early season well, much like Maryland didn't schedule their early season well. And Nebraska paid for it. Maryland just didn't have the wins. Well, you know, I heard... uh, uh, what's the name of the guy who used to coach Virginia Tech who does, uh, he was on Seth ES- Greenberg. Yeah, Seth Greenberg said, you know, when you look at these teams' records now, he said the tournament committee is looking at a record, say, like at, at Maryland, and Maryland was, what, 19 and 13? And, and they're yeah. kind of throwing out the eight games that there was no way they were going to lose. And that's kind of how they're looking at it. You certainly can't say that about any conference game. You can't say any conference game's a lock. You really can't. But when you play a team that, you know, has an enrollment of 2,000 and they happen to be D1, uh, the quality of that win is not that great. And you, uh, and you take a look. You know, you just can't play the cupcakes anymore. You've got to have a better schedule. And, be, and the other reason is, is because a win in the better schedule factor – is so positive, Wayne, and a loss doesn't hurt you that much. Doesn't hurt you that much. So Nebraska, Maryland, Georgetown, all teams are going to have to upgrade the early season schedule. But Maryland's going to take, Maryland basketball is going to take a trip to Italy this year. I expect them to play in a few tournaments, and they're going to have to go back to what they did a few years ago when they played in Oregon State or they played in um, Iowa State or in Oklahoma State, and they played home and away or in a tournament, they're going to have to get something on that resume that's a little bit better than what they have. In other words, if I was Coach Turgeon, I would ask 
to put to give us Villanova this year. All right, I would ask for Villanova, and you know, in the ACC, we have no control who they're going to give us. So there's two games there, and I think whereas you schedule a Bucknell who might make the tournament, I don't even know a Bucknell and a Butler was okay. I think you got to go a step further. I really do. I think you got to, you know, figure the ACC won't play us. But there are, you know, other conferences that will, a UCLA or a, uh, you know, a named team, Texas, or somebody is going to give you recognition of a win. And Look, if you- there's local-ish teams that can make the drive. If you want to throw a, a net around the New York Tri-State area and go as far as a Providence, a Seton Hall, you could make a, add a couple games of teams that are borderline top 20 even a St. Bonaventure to bring them in as part of a regular rotation. And go there as part of a rotation. You know what I mean? I mean, that St. game. St. Bonaventure's got a small place. That'd be really cool. Or maybe you, you hook up with Temple again at the Palestra. And that was a lot of fun. And uh, St. John's in the Garden. Duke lost to him. That'd you know? be great to go back to the Garden. Yeah, it I'd sure like would that. be. So I was watching the. The ACC tournament in Brooklyn, and the ACC no more belongs in Brooklyn than the Big Ten belonged in Madison Square Garden. Well, I, ha- I talked about it before we got you on about the BC State game. Was that a great game or what? I left when BC had a 10 point lead. Who won the game, Bruce? BC won the game. Well, at the buzzer, the- at the end of the game with 20 seconds left, that kid Jerome Robinson hit a jumper that was just, he had three guys on him. He is unbelievable. I, I didn't know he was the highest scorer in the ACC. I, I did not either. They had seven conference wins. They were 7 11, Boston College, and a 12 seed. And boy, was it snowing up there. Yeah. I got on the ground reports of the weather. We missed it by a week. That could have been us. Yeah, well, you really didn't miss it. You were stuck there. So, I mean, so be it. But now, what do you think of Michigan? I mean, how impressed were you? Certainly, we saw the end of the Michigan-Iowa game, and that game went to overtime. But after that, Wayne, they were, I mean, you know, they took down, they took down, who they take? Nebraska, they killed them. They beat Purdue, you know, and then they took down uh, Michigan State. That's a Uh, gauntlet, my friend. It's the defense as much as anything else. Their defense takes you out of what you want to do. I I talked about it there. I went to a couple of their press conferences uh, with Don Marcus. We just were watching what was going on there. We talked about it at football practice on College Park on Monday that they, even a physical team like Michigan State, the Michigan defense takes you out of what you want to do. And they are great on offense at spreading the floor and they make enough shots and the, the depth that Robinson off the bench, their sharpshooter number 22, gives them is incredible because he makes 60% of his threes. He's been incredible. They have tough guards. They have enough big guys to play, but they they stop you from doing what you want to do. They are a top 10 national defense. And it's not something you think about John Beeline when you talk about top 10 defense, but their defense is better than Harbaugh's defense on the football side. Well, uh, agreed. Let's look at next year. You got Sticks coming in, Jalen Smith. You got this kid Ayella coming in. I can't, you know, rumors are, you know, we're up in the air about Fernando and Justin Jackson. Neither of them are projected in the draft this year. They're both projected uh, I think uh, Fernando's a top pick next year, and Justin Jackson's the second round pick next year. Well, what do you yeah, think? I was talking what do to you hear? Do those guys stay or leave? What do you think? Uh, according to our source over at the Washington Post, some still have Justin Jackson in the first round just based on potential. If that is true after these draft camps, I think he goes. Now his I shoulder. I've seen him in the first round. Now that doesn't mean I'm not saying Roman Stubbs doesn't know what he's talking about, but he is not ready. He is just not ready. Well, nobody said Diamond Stone was ready. Nobody said Jordan Williams when he. We have a long history of people who aren't ready, who decide that they want to go. Yeah, I believe if it was up to Justin Jackson, and you say it is, but then you get his family and his handlers. If it was up to Justin Jackson, and Justin Jackson alone, he seems to love being here. I've heard from multiple people he loves being here, but his handlers 
his people want him to go. And he's gonna, it's going to take a very mature kid to tell everybody in his group that he's not going anywhere. And you're right, he's going to end up in Europe. He's not ready for the NBA. But, and I think if he stayed and he actually rehabbed his shoulder and he was in one piece, he'd be an absolute top 10 draft pick next year. But it's hard to turn down half a million dollars or a million dollars in Europe or whatever he's going to get to come back to College Park. If he stays and if Bruno, if all these kids stay, either Maryland's going to be very good, which is a possibility, or we're going to be back to where we were a couple of years ago when everybody who stayed is looking to make his mark to go to the NBA, and then that's a, a thing that fractures the team. So I don't know which way it's going to play out, Bruce. No, I don't either. Uh, well, Wayne, real quick, give me a synopsis of what you saw at the football <laughs> practice on Monday and uh, DJ's attitude and the fact that he's bringing Ralph Friesian back into the fold, which I think is great. How did you know that's what I wanted to talk about? I hope I can get out there on Friday. I know we're up against the clock. I saw a much bigger defensive line. There's a picture up on the Twitter side at triptalk.com showing Cowart and Gaddy standing next to each other. They are big guys. They weren't exactly in 100% football shape on Monday, but they're, they're much bigger. Maryland still has a depth problem at linebacker. On the offensive side, a guy that jumped off the screen was Rashad Lewis. He was at Utah State last year. He is, a, he is related. He's the son of Ray Lewis. He wears number 81 for the Terps. He might play two ways, receiver and defensive back. Wow. The quarterbacks that you want to see, which is Kasim Hill and Terrell Tegrom, they're still on the side. They're injured. Uh, if you go up to TripTalk.com and look at our sideline show, you will see the three quarterbacks are in one piece, which is Borton Schlager, the freshman from Virginia, Tyler DeSue, and uh, Jimmy Brumbaugh is a defensive line coach. His son plays quarterback for Maryland. He has the best name on the team. His name is Legend Brumbaugh. Legend. Legend. That's a great name. And he is the third string out of three. A tailback, I saw Anthony McFarlane, who was a top 70 national player, came to Maryland redshirt last year, a tailback. Oh, my God, was he quick. Now, he's sixth on the depth chart. If, if, the, if I'm going, look at the sixth guy we have. He's tremendous. Ty Johnson looks like he took a bodybuilding class in the offseason. I heard he He's looks a, unbelievable. Oh, Tell me about the uh, comeback, because uh, we're running against the clock, the comeback of Frisian. Did that shock you? I mean, it's really interesting that not only the DJ reached out to him, but he kind of, like, really accepted it. Well, DJ, you've seen the good DJ, the DJ with the story, not the, pre the press conference DJ needs a little work, but the DJ was a purpose is extremely persuasive. He wanted Ralph to come back. He sold Ralph on Maryland again. And Ralph said that if uh, Kevin Anderson was still there, he wouldn't do it. But Kevin Anderson isn't there. DJ wants him. So Ralph will be there on Friday to talk to the coaches clinic. And I'm going to make my phone calls over at Maryland and try and get myself in there with a video camera on Friday. Before I leave here today, thank you everyone for the thousands of views we've had on Maryland football. And if you haven't seen it yet, go to TripTalk.com. We have offensive coordinator Matt Canada, DJ Durkin, Ty Johnson, and others, along with our sideline show from College Park. And with that, Bruce... Uh, well, you forgot you about our lacrosse views. I mean, Maryland, Oh, we're going to talk, well, about talk about that. the great Connor Kelly, and we had the press conference afterwards. We had one of the best post-game shows we've ever had, even though Wayne was not there. But it was we had Mason and Todd, and it, it was rocking, wasn't it, in that, uh, in that club box? In the club box. Hey, you, you've got to watch. If you don't have a chance to listen to us on Saturday... Catch us after Maryland and Albany. It's one versus two in College Park for the regular season. It's not going to get any better than this. And all that will be on TurfTalk.com after the Maryland lacrosse game. Hey, there's Saturday. no doubt that in the past two or three seasons, this is the game. Maryland against Albany. Albany with Connor Fields at Tohoka Nanatoke and Maryland with Connor Kelly and Timmy Rotance and Logan Wisnowskis and you can keep running the names off. But is this this is as good as it gets. 
could be a prelude to the national championship game or a Final Four game. And it's regular season. It's at College Park. And if there's any way you can go, make this game. This is special. That's all okay, I can before say. Before we go to break, I got yes, one sir. lacrosse question, then we can get out of here. Shoot. Nana Coke at the faceoff for Albany is winning about 86% of the faceoff. T.D. Erland. T.D. Erland. Erland, I'm sorry. Right. Erland's winning 86% of his faceoffs. Maryland's got a new guy at the X. How does that work in your mind? Yeah, you, you got to give the odds to Erl, uh, T.D. Erland. I mean, he's the, he's the second best faceoff guy in lacrosse. It's going to be a real battle for Justin Shockey. But remember, Maryland's got the best wings that there are, and it will be a war, and he will use four guys if he has to. He'll use he'll use Bonaparte. He'll use Austin Hangson. He will use everything in his power to defeat him. Or he might say, let's see what Shockey can do. Let's give him a chance. And if he drops the first three or four, but look, here's the thing. You know, if they control the faceoffs with that offense, they are tough, very, very tough to beat. But have they seen Bryce Young yet? Have they seen Jack Welding? Have they seen uh, uh, Curtis Corley? Have they seen Sure they Matt? have. This is the third time we've played them in, a, in 12 months. This is a real, this is going to be a, a well, what happened? Game. What happened last year? Well, all the chips were on the table. Maryland pulled some face-off magic, sort of even that out, and they shut down that offense. The guys weren't big enough to go against Maryland. It looked a lot like a North Carolina front line, where Maryland was just able to out physical them. Which Maryland usually does to Carolina. They did it to Albany. They couldn't get away. Maryland dominated the game. Hey. We're gonna see about Nana. We know Fields is gonna get his points. We're gonna see you know, we're gonna see Nana Coke when he faces maybe the best defender in the game in Bryce Young. And he'll be doubled and you know, they'll slide to him and they'll do everything they can to frustrate him. But I do know one thing, you've gotta keep Nana Coke away from the shorties because there's no way. There is just no way. Wayne, we are way past the break. Uh, thanks for checking in, and we will talk to you on Saturday. You got it. Go Terps. All right. This is Bruce Posner. You're listening to Coons Ford Terp Talk.